Hi everybody, it's Miss Judy. Welcome to Kids Formation. This summer, we learned about people from the Old Testament, the time before Jesus. Now that it's September, we're going to go back to learning from the New Testament, the time of Jesus. We're also going to go back to starting our time together by looking at our church calendar. So let's take a look. Right now, the calendar is pointing to last Sunday. Each dot represents a Sunday. And all this summer was the long season after Pentecost. So let's click forward to today. So this represents today. And you can see that we are still in the long season after Pentecost. But we're aiming to the next season, the season of Advent. Now it's time for our lesson. This is one of my favorite lessons to teach. And you older kids who've known me for a long time will be tempted to think, oh, we know this already. You always talk about this. But I want to remind you that when you're tempted to say, I already know this, instead of thinking that, you should remember, oh, this must be really important. Often when things are repeated, it's because it's very important. And when I repeat something to you guys, it's not because I think you don't know it. It's because it's so very important. In front of me here is a building. And if someone was walking by this building or driving by this tall building with a cross on top, they might say, oh, there's a church. But you know what? This is not the church. Come take a closer look. The church is not a building. The church is the people. The people who love Jesus are the church. Look at all these people here. People who love Jesus. We are the church. I'm the church. You're the church. We are the church together. The church is the people. Now, even though the church is the people and not a building, let's take a look at my building over here. So I made this building for our lesson and I made it out of Duplo blocks. And if you take a look at my building here, it's made up of all different bricks, different colors, different sizes, and they all fit together to make this building. And if you look closely down here, there's a special orange colored brick. There's none other like it. And that's a special spot called the cornerstone the cornerstone of the building. And a cornerstone is special. A cornerstone, especially back when buildings were built by hand out of bricks or out of stones, the cornerstone would be the first piece put down and someone who was very knowledgeable would put that first cornerstone down and it was very important that it was in the right place because every stone or brick that came after it would follow the cornerstone. So if the cornerstone was off, the whole building would be off. So the cornerstone is a very important part 
of a building that's made up of many different bricks or stones put together. In the Bible, in the New Testament, in the book of Ephesians, it tells us something about a building and something about the church. In Ephesians chapter 2, it says that we are no longer strangers, that because of Jesus, we are brought together as God's family, just like these bricks are brought together to be one building, we are brought together to be God's family. And Ephesians also tells us that Jesus is our cornerstone. Now that doesn't mean that Jesus is an actual stone, but it means that just like the cornerstone of a building is first and most important, Jesus is first, and he's the most important part. He brings us together. And Ephesians also says that when we're brought together in Jesus, and we are one family, one church, that that's where God's spirit lives. God's spirit is in us. So just like people can go inside a building we are the church. God made us one family and God's spirit dwells in us. So important thing to remember from today is that we are the church. People are the church, not the building. This is a church building, but the people are the church. No matter where they meet, if they meet in a special building, if they meet over Zoom like we're doing, people are the church, God's family. Now we have some activities that came to you in the mail. If they haven't arrived yet, they should arrive soon. And there's an activity for today. So in your packet, one page is instructions that your grown-up can take a look at. And our activity for today has two parts. A circle made up of circles and a dial, a pointer. Okay? And this will be your very own church calendar to have at home. So the first thing you'll do with your blank calendar is you'll color in the dots. And the dots are certain colors because they show the seasons of the church year. So when you look at your blank church calendar, you'll see that some dots say G for green, some dots say P for purple, one special dot says R for red. And then some of the dots are empty and those just stay white because those are the four colors of the church year, purple, green, white, and red. When you're done coloring, it'll look something like this with all the colors represented on the church calendar. When it's all colored in, you can add in your pointer. The way you do that is you take your pointer, and your grown-up might have to help with this, and the long parts bend in, and there's a hole in the center, and the long pieces Go in that hole, and then on the back, the long pieces get flattened out. And then that way you can have a pointer. You might notice when you're coloring that one of the G's is darker, and that's the place where 
your pointer should start for today. So your activity for today is to color in the church calendar, add the pointer. You can decorate around the edges, but you want to make the colors to match the colors of the church. Before we go, let's take a closer look at the calendar. So the church calendar starts up here, with these four purple spots, these four purple Sundays. So this spot here is like Happy New Year for the church. So the church calendar starts with Advent. That's this purple season here that gets us ready for Christmas, which is the star. Then this white season is the Christmas season. And then this next set of green dots is the season after Epiphany. Then we have another purple season called Lent that gets us ready for Easter. That's where the cross is. And Easter is such a special celebration that we have this long season of Easter. And that takes us to our red Sunday for Pentecost. And then after Pentecost, we have this long green season, the season after Pentecost. And that's the season that we are in right now. And after the season after Pentecost, we are back to Happy New Year and the season of Advent. So when you color in your calendar and have the pointer, you can keep track of what season we're in and have this at home. If you have any questions, let me know and be sure to watch the other video, KF Storytime. Take care, everybody.